Hello everyone. In this role-based series for the preparation of CISM exam, I'm going to take some scenarios and we'll try to cover the topics of CISM exam in those scenarios. This will help you to map the topic of CISM with the real world requirement of information security domain. So in this scenario, I'm going to play a role of a consultant whose name is Kumar. And uh, this particular consultant is providing services to a company to establish a information security incident management in their organization. And this is the fourth domain of uh, CISM, that is information security incident management. And in the whole scenario, I will be in a virtual meeting with the company persons and will try to explain the concepts of information security incident management to them. So let's start. Hi, Kumar. Hello, Sara. Let me introduce everyone. I am Sarah from the InfoSec team. And in this discussion, we have Matthew or CISO, Natasha from GRC team, Manager, InfoSec Manager, and Melinda from InfoSec team. Hello, everyone. Hi, Kumar. So, Kumar, we had discussions on phone and emails related to our requirement to have a well-defined information security incident management in our organization. So, can start to discuss on this. Just to add on this, we want to establish an effective program to respond to and subsequently manage incidents that may threaten our organization's information systems and infrastructure. Uh, okay, Matthew, uh, definitely I will try to cover uh, the said topic. And uh, this is what I'm planning to cover in uh, our discussion. So I will cover the process to identify, analyze, manage and respond effectively to unexpected events or we can say uh, uh, events which have an impact on the CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability value of the information systems. So and then we are also able to discuss about the incident response plan and will identify the components of an incident response plan. And I will also discuss how to evaluate the effectiveness of an incident response plan. And finally, uh, we will try to map the relationship uh, of uh, IRP, Incident Response Plan, with Disaster Recovery Plan and Business Continuity Plan for a better understanding. Great. Great. It seems, it seems you, you understood, understood our requirements. requirements. So, so let's, let's start. start. Okay. Uh, thanks, Matthew, for this. And uh, uh, when we're talking about incident management, let's start with the very basic understanding of what exactly an incident means. So when we are talking about incident, any disruptive event which have an impact on the CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability of the information or of the information system is an incident. So the network attacks, the social engineering attacks, uh, process failure, natural disasters, all these comes under uh, incident. Okay, so now we need to know how to manage these incident. It means how to minimize the impact of these particular incident. And this is what is covered under incident management. Means incident management is the capability to effectively manage unexpected and disruptive events within a particular time frame and also uh, bring the operations back to normal, I can say. So this is what incident management is. Okay, so taking this forward, incident management is a subcomponent of risk management and incident response is a subcomponent of incident management. Now you must be thinking what exactly incident response is. Then remember, whatever is covered under incident response is a part of incident management. So incident response is just a subset of incident management. So incident response is the operational forensic and investigative capability of incident management via which we identify, we prepare ourselves and we respond to incidents which will further help us to meet the timeline for the recovery as defined in our agreed SLA with the client or internal SLAs also. So this is what incident response so is. So Kumar, who is responsible for incident response? So uh, I can say Matthew that uh, in most of the organization incident response is the responsibility of information security manager. So he must be technically expert and must have a deep understanding of uh, information security. So Mahesh, I think uh, this is uh, more... Thanks, Kumar. Surely we require your help in this. Yes, uh, definitely we will have help uh, Mahesh in this. And for uh, as an uh, InfoSec manager, you need to develop, you need to test the incident response plans and you should also ensure the correlation of the incident response plan with business continuity and disaster recovery plans also. Okay, are uh, taking it forward, how we can plan for incident response. So while we are talking about the planning of incident response, we can say that uh, we can divide the whole process into four parts. First, we need to have a formal approved incident response plan, a documented one, and we should have uh, the support of the senior management for that particular plan also. 
Further, we need to distribute this IRP to each and everyone who is having a role in, uh, in the incident response uh, process. And also, if there is any changes within the organization related to any business objective change, related to any process change, then there should be the respective changes also uh, we should make in the IRP. Now, this IRP, Incident Response Plan, should cover the goals of the incident response and also it should cover the systematic approach and to, uh, to address the incidents in a timely and in a better way. So, this is how we plan for incident response. Any query? Okay, these IR requirements are majorly coming from the business, the mission, the objective of the organization. Uh, I can say the type of the industry you are working, uh, the organization is in working in. Like if it is a financial organization, then the business goals are uh, providing 100% uptime to the uh, to its clientage. So depending on the type of the industry and the organization, the IR requirements will come. Also, uh, the kind of the service the organization is providing, that also the IR requirements will also come from them. And the type of the relationship, the type of the uh, contracts you have with your customers and other stakeholders, it also comes from that. Then finally, if an incident is having any financial uh, implications, then the financial debt and the cost involved, IR requirements will also come from them. Also, the resources required for response, the requirement, IR requirement will also come from that particular point of view. Yes, yes, now, now I, understand I understand why we require incident, incident response. response. Okay, uh, good to know, uh, Matthew, on this. So, I taking it for, forward, I can say the incident response plan have six elements. First one, preparation, which help us to establish the approach of uh, uh, doing incident response. Then the identification, the step in which we uh, verify whether any incident is an incident or not. Then uh, any event is an incident or not. Then finally, uh, the third one is the containment, which help us to limit the exposure and communicate with the business owner also. Then comes the eradication, that is the fourth one in which we do completely eradicate the impact of that particular uh, incident and to do the root cause uh, analysis also. And then comes the recovery phase. In the recovery phase, we need to bring the system back to the normal state. And uh, this is the phase which will help us to deal with the service delivery objective which is uh, defined in our uh, documents. And then finally, lessons learned. So that is the last stage, but uh, that is the most important one. So if Similar type of incidents will happen again in the future, but we need to do better so that we can handle those incidents in a better way. So that is the lessons learned. So this is uh, these are the six elements of incident response. Now the picture is coming up in front of us, but in case of multiple incidents, how we will set the priority? Okay, Sarah, for uh, setting the priority of the incident, I can say use risk management document and also the use uh, the business impact analysis report which you are having. Depending on that particular thing, we can set the severity of that particular incident and severity will f further define the uh, criticality and priority of that particular incident. So this is how we uh, define the incident uh, priorities. Kumar, can you share more details on the process and documentation which are required in incident response process and some more details? Uh, good, Sarah. Uh, definitely, I will share this uh, list of the documentation in the last. But uh, I can say as an information security manager, Mahesh need to take care of most of the documentation. And he must ensure that the incidents are properly investigated and documented. And a in documented incident response plan is also required and it will ensure that each and every participant knows their role in that particular incident. Further, I can say the forensic and the post incident examination and follow up documentation should also be uh, taken into the documentation category. With all this, we also need to ensure that whatever incidents we are handling, we should handle them in a legal manner in compliance with the laws and policies. So at minimum, we require a IRP, Incident Response Plan. We require the proce procedure documentation for handling different type of incidents and the RCA format, root, uh, root cause analysis format and some more documentation like some checklist, some contact list are also part of, of the documentation. So, so what are the most critical part of incident response which we can focus okay. while developing an IRP? Uh, right, Sarah. So uh, when we are talking about the most critical part of incident response uh, on which we need to focus on, uh, we can divide the same into two parts. One is the training, other one is determination of the severity. Priority, how we can set the priority. Then severity is also the criteria for setting of the priority. The determination of uh, criteria, uh, severity criteria should be consistent. It should be con concise. And there should be some authority which can declare 
any incident as a disaster so that our respective team can be activated and uh, uh, we can mobilize the recovery process so that is one part which is most important one the other part is training to the uh, persons who are involved in the response process so uh, so that they can easily recognize the incident they can respond they can notify they can escalate and they can report them correctly so these are the two most important part i can say which are uh, so we need to prepare well in advance yes matthew but remember no amount of preparation will avoid all incident but it will allow the organization to respond effectively at time of incident crisis for and for this uh, we require well documented incident response procedures for different type of incidents so any other important part we need to take care of yes uh, one more part i can say uh, we should look for the root cause of an incident after that particular incident always make it a uh, make it mandatory that we should have a rca root cause analysis report after each and every incident so uh, this will help us to identify and schedule for the remediation so once we have a well documented formal incident review process in place this particular rca will be the part of the same so do we have any frameworks or references yes for incident response we can use the nist frameworks also we can use uh, the we can refer the software engineering institute also guidelines also so uh, but in a nutshell i can say incident handling is uh, handling the events uh, detection reporting doing trials doing analysis and finally incident response within that particular process which will further be the part of the incident overall incident management which will provide us a structure to investigate to diagnose and to resolve and close incidents Because so we need to have a dedicated team for incident response as i have seen dedicated irt teams in many organizations uh for this question i can say yes and no also as we first need to understand what are the teams required in incident management and response and then we can define the teams and its organization like some of the teams can be emergency action team damage assessment team emergency management team relocation team and security team also so all of them have different purpose or we can combine those team together and have okay. to okay uh have some uh, combined responsibilities also so matthew in industry we use different irt models so once we decide that this is the team we require we can define the model in our organization like uh, our central incident response team our distributed incident response team our coordinating re- uh, incident response team or outsourced incident response team so this modeling of incident response team will totally depend on some of the important factors like uh, the type of the organization uh, we are working in the nature of the services it is providing available uh, expertise within the staff itself or, or do we need to hire some more uh, expert s- staff from outside and size and contingency and technology base we are having and uh, anticipated uh, incident load also then uh, the severity of the incidents reporting and ultimately the most important one the funding we have for that particular thing so uh, these are some of the factors on which we decide the model of the irt team in our organization so what should we some of the check points to select any person for an irt so if you want to select any outsider or insider within the uh, irt team you should check whether they have the understanding of the security principles do they have understanding on the security vulnerabilities and weaknesses uh, they must have the understanding on the internet and network protocols they should be aware of the network applications and services the operating systems uh knowledge they should they must have and then uh they must understand the malicious code malware virus apt and also uh, they should have a programming skills it is not important that each and every person should be competent in all of them but we require one or two persons in each of these domains and as a ciso i can say matthew that it is your responsibility that the whole team is well trained as having a trained teams to handle incident may minimize the impact of the incident and any untrained teams may make an incident more worse so uh make it a surety that everyone is well trained for uh, this particular thing so with this i can say no need to have a dedicated team in your organization and the persons from multiple department or teams may be identified and informed well in advance and the contact list of all those persons identified persons i can say need to be kept up to date so whenever there is any incident then the respective team members can be called uh, to come on board for the incident handling process so hope i am able to answer your query matthew yes we are i got the idea also matthew uh, while you are planning training for your incident management team staff ensure that you must cover uh, the induction training 
uh, in-house in mentoring of the team members on job trainings and some of the formal training in different skill sets. So, and tomorrow we hire a third party for incident response. So, Matthew, in case of uh, uh, third party, it means if you hire a third party for incident manage, uh, incident uh, response, then you need to add some more process. Like you need to have a process which will match the organization incident reference number internal within your organization with the vendor reference number for each incident. The, there should be a process, and there there is a, a process also required for the integration of the organization change management process with that of the vendor. And finally, a third process is also required, which will uh, be a periodic review of the incident that are occurring on regular basis. Also, Matthew, even having an identified or dedicated team is not enough. We must also know some of the external parties that may be required as part of the incident response, depending on the situation or depending on the type of the incident. Like we must identify some public relation person or agencies, some forensic investigator, legal persons, etc. So we must determine and document the point of contact of all the relevant external parties and must have a, a contractual agreement with them uh, in advance. So uh, moving this further, the IRP incident response plan have a mapping with BCP business continuity plan and this mapping should be in the form of an internal agreement on the process for transition from IRP to BCP. It means incident response plan when incident response plan is activated and when to activate the BCP business continuity plan there should be an internal agreement and this internal agreement should take the reference of some of the timelines, some of the RTOs, MTOs, MTD, risk tolerance and business impact analysis reports. So depending on these metrics, we can say that this is the time of transition from IRP to BCP. So this is what the mapping of IRP and BCP is. That's good info, Kumar. Also, Kumar, once we have the incident response plan in place, then how we will check on its efficiency? Okay, uh, Sara, to check the efficiency, I can say we need to do some test. So we need to test all aspects of IRP, uh, which will help us to identify the gaps, which will help us to verify the assumptions, which will help us to test the timelines which we have set in our IRP, and which will also determine the effectiveness of the strategies which we have uh, we are taking or using, and the, uh, it will help us to evaluate the performance of our personnel so who are involved in the uh, incident response process. So finally, it will help us to determine the accuracy of the overall plan. So as a uh, manager, I want to uh, to inform Mahesh that it is his objective to develop the test Any objectives. On this part, yes, uh, so Mahesh need to test the objective, develop and test the objectives. Also, he need to execute the test and some other team or third party need to evaluate the test. Also, we can develop some recommendation to improve the plans and the testing process. With all this, we also need to implement some follow up procedures. So uh, there is one important thing which we need to remember. Untested plan poses an unacceptable level of risk for the organization. Fully agree on this, Kumar. Yeah. So uh, with all these points, I just want to add some more points. Try to conduct the test under realistic condition, as in real time. The more severe the incident, more chaos will be there. So all reasonable anticipated events must be anticipated and prepared for. Means the planning should be thorough, realistic and well tested. So, uh, Sarah, Matthew and team, I have some other commitments for the day. So, I will connect with you tomorrow at the same time to discuss on the incident management part. So, uh, this is what I have for today. Okay, Kumar, thanks a lot for your time and Sarah kindly scheduled a meeting for tomorrow and share the invite. Okay, thank you. Bye everyone.